there's my song um, called Gone. I wrote it a wee while ago, and it sort of tackles uh, mental health and the two perspectives um, from each side of the story. So I hope you enjoy it. I wish you could have helped me understand Everything that you've been feeling I want to know what's on your mind I wish we had more time And every photo that I look at And every memory that we spend I really should stop to look back But it only makes me more and every single day I think about you Trying hard to get you off my mind But I don't think I'll ever move on From this love we've left behind I should have said how I was feeling but That was hard for me to do Cause I never wanted to hurt you With what I had to do It was never my intention To bring this to an end But there never is a good time To let you go nowhere And every single day I think about you Trying hard to get you off my mind but I don't think I'll ever move on From this love we've left behind And every single minute of this hour And every single second that we spend I've been trying hard to forget about you But it's the one thing in my head And now you're gone I realize how much you meant to me so long for me to hold these broken memories and every single day I think about you trying hard to get you off my mind but I don't think I'll ever move on from this love we've left behind and every single Every single second that we spend I've been trying hard to forget about you But it's the one thing in my head Yeah, well, I mean, starting off I was just Ed Sheeran fanboy That's what I started, I was like, oh, I want to be acoustic guitar Where I look pedal on a stage So that's how it actually started with um, me just playing acoustic guitar accompanying myself so that I bought my first loop pedal um, and then a massive like I, I don't know maybe I, I just suddenly one day decided that Jack Garrett was my have you heard of Jack Garrett he's like my, you should definitely check him out he's an unbelievable musician um, I've seen him and it's like he's almost like Ed Sheeran like on steroids I don't want to say that in case there's anybody that loves Ed Sheeran because he's a completely different musical genre wise but he's got that sort of loop pedal and he's got a sample pad and he's got keys and he's got synth and he actually incorporated a drum kit into his set. So this is just one guy making this like tremendous sound and to me it just blew me away. So I mean, I, I went from having a guitar and a loop pedal um, and then I, I went into um, having a guitar, a sample pad and a loop pedal and I would, instead of, you know, how Ed Sheeran would hit his guitar and make a beat, I would just play it into the loop pedal and then I bought my first like, um, little synth to sort of put some nice pads behind it and then I, I sort of me and my brother then were like why do we not just sort of take a bit of Jack Garrett um, and do it in my own way so I ended up um, having a keys synth and sample pad um, and I would loop things in and I would um, trigger them in so that's sort of how that was my original setup now I'm moving away from that because I'm sort of I'm more into um, I'm really into a Phineas right now, um, love, um, love, I always say it wrong, love, um, sort of these sort of popular artists now, um, so I've definitely over time changed and um, definitely influenced by, heavily by um, different artists, but now I think sort of, because I was a bit younger then, I was kind of, oh, I want to be him, I want to be like him, but now I sort of, I think I've sort of found my own sound now, 
and I'm quite happy with how sort of the way I'm heading um because I've, I've sort of getting a band together and I want to move away from the instruments completely and just sort of perform because my my main um my main passion really is songwriting and I like to get across the lyrics so that's probably that's how my that's sort of how I've transformed anyway from different artists Um, yeah, I mean, uh, my, my songwriting has always been jumping about. I mean, I always get asked the question, like, oh, how do you start, like, with your song? And, I mean, it used to be I would get, you know, a guitar and do, I don't know, four chords and think of a chorus. And then when I've got the chords, I then put lyrics to it. But now uh, it's completely different. Now I'll literally, like, the, the, a song Better Off Alone that's coming out. Um, it's my next song that's coming out on the 28th of May, and I've got... That one, is, I've literally got a voice memo of me walking down the street. Um, it's in my voice memo somewhere. And I just sort of got that hook. Um, duh, 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 duh. And I was like, oh, that, that could be something. And straight away, I just I brought out my voice memos and just hummed that in. And then I was walking down the street further and I thought of the... And I was like, that's, sort of how, that's usually how I go about it now. It's strange because I used to be very much guitar or on piano thinking of chords and then putting lyrics to the chords but I much prefer now putting chords to the lyrics as I'm very more a lyricist than a than a music uh, not an instrumentalist I'd say it's definitely it's definitely made me it's, I think it's changed my songwriting a bit it's sort of um I mean but I think it's more pushed te pushed me tech technology wise because obviously I'm not being able to go into a studio and I've sort of had to do more myself and it's sort of when I write write a song I, I like to record it because I'll, I'll, I'm just a terrible memory I like to put it down so after I finish a song I do like to uh, put it down in a logic session and um, just as a like short little demo so I mean lockdowns definitely I think it's done that to everybody though like bedroom pop take bedroom pop for example that's that was a big genre already, but I mean, after lockdown, it's shot up even more because I mean, everybody's in the house; they can't go to a studio. So, I mean, it's definitely affected affected men that that way. Uh, this song's called "Better Off Alone," and it's coming out on the twenty eighth of May. So, if you like it, please um, check it out. Um, hope you enjoy. Started out with just a window Moving on to something more though One night it'll be alright I'm trying hard but I'm losing the fire A tempty glass but it don't seem transparent I'm coming down but it's such a habit Losing faith in my mind Cause I'm warning you about my side I'm pulling you in just to get fucked over I can only talk when I'm not sober Only getting used to get over I know that it's wrong but it feels so right yeah, I wanna work with you but I know That I'm better off alone That I'm better off alone I drown myself but what can I do Surround myself with no one like you One I was one too many I wanna leave but please don't let me My grip is tight, can see in the let go Know what I want for more or less so just as clear, but I still cannot see that What I want is not what I need I'm pulling you in just to get fucked over I can only talk when I'm not sober Only getting used to get over I know that it's wrong, but it feels so right Yeah, I wanna work with you, but I know then I'm better off alone Cause I'm getting used to this I wish I wasn't used to this Hoping I had missed Cause 
I'm getting used to you This feeling feels too new Like you stuck me with your glue I'm pulling you in just to get fucked over I can only talk when I'm not sober We're only getting used to get over I know that it's wrong, but it feels so right I wanna work with you, but I know That I'm better off alone That I'm better off alone Hello Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, even like um, take Mark Sharp for example. Like yeah, he was saying like he would never have even he thought to get to King Tut's, and that was always his main goal. But then he's went even further and went to St. Luke's and whatnot. It's I mean, it's so it's so inspiring. You see the snuts, like what they've done now, and they are they're literally ten minutes down the road from me. I, um, Lewis, it's, it's it's absolutely mental to even think like it just it can change. Just like that, and um, I don't, I don't, I don't even know what my my goal would be. I'd just love to people to enjoy my music. Really, <laughs> I've never thought too much into you know. I'd love to sell out King Tots. Even I would love to sell out King Tots, but I've not really got that like end goal that I would. Oh, I'd love to do that. I'd love to do that. I've always just sort of wanted people to you know listen to my music. And what I love about songwriting is you know I could write it about like my song Gone, for example. I, I wrote that, it was uh, about mental health and I, I, took, I made the situation up if, um, from like a relationship I said one person had sadly ended their life, how, how it would affect like sort of two perspectives on it, so the first verse is from the person left behind being like why would you do this, it's so selfish almost, and the second person is like I'm sort of shown I, I just couldn't cope anymore and I wrote that song and I've had people come up to me, I've had something came up to me and actually said, well, that exact situation has happened to me and I, that song, like, has uh, really helped me. Um, and I've had another person who came up to me and said, that's him, I love that song, it made me think of my dad or other people being like, it makes me think of a relationship. And that's what I was going for it because I didn't want it to be, like, it was obviously about mental health, but I didn't want it to be, like, really in your face that, that it's about mental health. I wanted it to be open for interpretation. Like, I, 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 that's what I, that's why I think, you know, you've wrote a good song is when you can you can write something about, you know, one of your really personal experiences and someone else can link it to one of their personal experiences that's completely different and that's what I re that's what I really love about songwriting I mean, I mean a few of my friends that are in the industry as well suffer from it um, I mean I know it's a massive um, thing music wise as well um, so yeah, it's, it's a quite a big thing to me. Um, I mean, it's it's terrible now. I think I feel like now it's like nowadays compared to a few years ago, it's like the difference. I was speaking to my mom and dad, um, and we were talking about it, and they said when um, you hear about it when they were my age, like it would be the rarest thing ever. But nowadays, it's like it happens all the time. It's so sad that that happens all the time, um, and it's a shame that. You know, as people can think like that, and and music scene, I, I is a, I think it is a very big thing in the music scene, and I think it does come down to like, the industry as well. Like it does, like you say, just chew people up and spit them out. Um, it's it's a brutal, it's a brutal scene. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, definitely. Um, I, I know, like, a few people have probably had to ditch their dreams almost because of lockdown. I don't, I don't think that creative arts got enough support whatsoever. Um, obviously, for me, it's, like, not my full-time job at all, but there's a lot of people that it is, and um, it's not like they're getting furloughed or whatever. They're, they, like you say, the government literally said um, 
retrain. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't think they're getting enough support whatsoever. And I think, again, that can link back to the mental health. And during lockdown, it's been a massive thing as well. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a real issue. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess I've always had, like, music around the house. So, I, I mean, it kind of just felt like... I, I don't th I can't remember a point where I was like, oh, I'm going to pick up music. I think I've always just sort of thought, oh, my dad does it. You know, I'm going to do it. Um, my brother also does it. It's kind of just been... even When I was younger, I also got, like, piano lessons and guitar lessons and whatnot, but I was never, like, too invested in it. I guess it was always just there for me. And it wasn't until I sort of got into... Uh, high school when I started writing that's when I sort of really got into it but I mean I love the fact that like in my house there was always just guitars lying about and there was always pianos and it was so easy access so um I mean that's definitely probably the reason my dad is definitely the reason that I'm in music <laughs> but I, I I love the fact that me and my dad and my brother um we all just play and we can all just jam out together and my mum, um, even though she doesn't play, she is like Simon Cowell. She tells us all when we're rubbish, <laughs> but we wouldn't we wouldn't change that because we need something to tell us um, when when we're out of tune. <laughs> I'll be the bird if you can find a stone. Do you even know what you've been searching for? Cause you've been looking for a while now Tell me how you've been Have you got any closer? Cause to me you could've done no wrong That's all I was to you To left my heart deserted Cause we're done I don't need you anymore Cause you decided to throw this many people now because it's so accessible i love the fact that there's i mean you can go on spotify and you can search it's for literally anything you'll get a hundred songs for it is there's so, so many people releasing new stuff um, and i love that but then again also there's more competition so but i wouldn't change that at all i love the fact that you know take bedroom pop like i said earlier you know 
it's another genre that's coming like fastly on the rise because it's so easy and accessible. Like it, you, if you buy a Mac, you get Garage Band for free. Um, that's how so many people have started, and they've actually ended up making a career out of it. Um, it's completely mental, but um, I love the fact that everything's so accessible, um, and it, literally anybody could do it. Um, I mean, there is a lot more competition, but I like that. Yeah, I would, I de definitely. When I, you know, when I seen Lewis and the Snots, um, it just it just shows you that literally anybody can do it. It really does. It, it inspired me a lot. Um, it gives you a bit of belief, you know. Um, and like I say, they're literally for them being ten minutes down the road. Uh, it's mental. It's absolutely nuts. And but it does fill me with a, a lot of belief. It inspires me a lot for a for a industry that can be so like um can be so hard on you. Um I mean seeing artists like Stotts and Lewis um achieve their goals and see them doing great really does boost you a lot. Well, I to say, because I was talking about my setup earlier, over lockdown, you know, I went into lockdown having that just solo with the setup, and then over lockdown, I don't know, I've been watching a lot of different artists, um, and I sort of, coming out of it, um, I'm hoping to have that band and have um, have my, my, live, my live set really tightened up, um, and I've also got my, my new song, Better Off Alone, coming out on the 28th um, of May, as I said, um, and I'm hoping that... Um, I'm hoping that does does well. Um, coming out of lockdown, I'd love to just get as many gigs as I can because I've missed gigging. I'd love to go at as many gigs as I can, just see everybody. And, yeah, just really enjoy it because, <laughs> I mean, lockdown's been boring for everyone. <laughs> so I'm just going to... That's my, my... After my, my pre-lockdown um, mentality is uh, don't say no. <laughs> just go out and, you know, oh, there's somebody playing down at King Tut's, oh, I've never heard of them, still I'll get a ticket, you know, go and see as many people as I can, um, and I'm hoping that everybody's like that, it's because um, the music industry's been really, really put down over lockdown, so I'm hoping that now that it's sort of easing, everybody's thinking the same way and wants to go out and enjoy music and appreciate it. <laughs> 